Welcome everybody to the Blind Search 101 presented by HighEndTrial.com. My name is John Wolf, and today I want to share with you uh, the steps I do to um, teach the blinds to my young dogs. Uh, so before we get started, I really want to um, <clears throat> share why I put an emphasis on the blind search. Um, it's only five points of the entire protection routine. However, I, I feel like it kind of sets the sets the mood for the entire routine. Um, a lot of times you see dogs that um, mess up the blind search who then go on to kind of be out of sync the rest of the routine. I, I think this comes because the dog kind of in the back of his mind knows he screwed something up. So then he goes into his bark and hold with a little questioning and, and maybe a little pressure from the handler. And so I like to get, it's a good tone setter to get a nice, good blind search. So what does a good blind search look like? So the model for what I'm trying to teach the blind search is, um, Martin Peja and his dog Cato. Um, this is video from the 2013 WUSV trial we'll take a look at. Um, it's a super blind search, um, so we'll take a look at it here. <clears throat> we want a dog that's fast and direct to the blind, that looks into the blind, takes the blind tight, and takes direction from the handler. So let's look at Martin and Cato. Fast to the blind, takes it tight, very nice. Again, fast and tight. Same there. And in this one, we'll be able to really get a good angle of, of the dog looking into the blind. Right there. Boom. Takes it tight. It's just really a super blind search all the way down the field. It takes the blind very tight, very fast. Um, takes good direction from the handler. So, in order to be clear here, I, I've never trained with Martin. Um, I don't know if, if he's teaching it the same way I'm teaching it. This is just kind of my model for what I want my end blind search to look like. So, these are the steps I'm taking to get there. So, the two common techniques for running the blinds. Um, this is the one I teach, always going into the same side of the blind. So, the dog's always going to go into the left side of the blind and leave the right. So in the left, out the right, in the left, out the right. <clears throat> this technique is not without its drawbacks. Here at this blind four, you'll see a lot of dogs around this blind, and they'll know the helpers in six here. So they'll round the blind and be like, uh, I'm going to take a shortcut and go direct, directly to six rather than going to five. Um, so just know that going into it, that that's a downside of this technique. Um, the upside is it's easier to teach. The dog's only ever going in one side and only ever leaving one side. So always going in the left, always coming out the right. Um, the other technique is always going in the upfield side of the blind. So as the dog goes, always going in upfield. So he's making like a figure eight type motion. Upfield, upfield, upfield. Um, this is a very good technique also. Um, it kind of avoids this problem here because um, it's much less temptation for the dog to skip. Um, like in, in the last technique, how he went around and wanted to go there. With going away from the helper, it's much less temptation for the dog. So this is a very good um, technique as well. So equipment needed. Uh, is a blind. Um, any blind will do. Um, regulation size, mini blind, whatever you got. I personally use a regulation size, but you can do it with a small blind as well. Uh, driveway markers, these can be found at any home improvement store. Um, quite cheap, so it's not a big hit on the pocketbook. I start off with 10 of them. <clears throat> Toy of choice, ball, tug, sleeve, uh, whatever motivates your dog. So, first time I go out, um, set up the field, I always go out with one blind. And, um, like I said, I, I always go in the left side and at the exit of the blind. So, on this right hand side of the blind, I'll set up driveway markers into the shoot type pattern um, with this little curve here. Um, this encourages the dog to slow down and get in between here. Um, 
So a lot of times when your dog's doing protection, he's in higher drive. And if this isn't the six blind, they'll know the helper's in six. So they'll just be going to try to get around this blind as fast as they can. With that speed, it makes it very hard for them to take a, a blind tight. So <clears throat> um, you'll see a lot of dogs take it. And because of their speed, they'll take these blinds real wide. And that just is costing us points. So we're going to teach a dog to be fast, but put on the brakes so that he can he understands to take this blind tight from the very get-go we want to establish in that brain take the blind tight take the blind tight take the blind tight <clears throat> so a little video here of the setup so as you can see here this is a pretty tight squeeze the dog is, really has to work to get in there So step one, um, usually what I'll do is have the dog on leash, bring him out, and I'll, I'll actually go in the left side of the blind, kind of walk him around to this opening of the chute here. <clears throat> and at the opening of the chute, I'll put the dog in a sit-stay. <clears throat> so dog's in a sit-stay there. I'll leave the dog and walk in between the chute down to the end of the blind. <clears throat> and from there, I'll call the dog to here and reward immediately in front of me uh, by immediately in front um in my instance i'm teaching the dog like i'm going down the blinds this way i like to do it that way because it encouraged to take this tight so i'll reward in front and, and that means kind of on this side right here so here dog comes to me gets a reward always reward in front and <clears throat> a lot of the times the dog's won't want to get into this so they'll try to go around or they'll try to go in between the markers don't reward for that just take them back to the beginning and encourage them to go in between the markers <coughs> so here's me with my dog kind of sitting at the opening of the chute there here yes so i'll mark as soon as they hit this last marker here tell them yes and he'll come get the ball So step two, again, I'll bring the dog around and I'll slowly make my way further away from the chute. So last step, I was right here in the chute. Next rep, I might be right here and, and then slowly move back. Um, at some point, the dog is going to be able to see me out of this side of the blind. So that's going to be real tempting for the dog to take the path of least resistance, which is back this way in order to get to me. So... If your dog does go the wrong way around, just encourage him to go back this way. Make make your criteria a little easier and um, and get some more successful reps. <clears throat> so again, just so stay farther behind the blind, call the dog to here, reward immediately in front again. Again, always reward in front and they have to be going in between the chute as well. So here again, we have my dog. And as you can see right here, my dog's looking out this side of the blind. He he knows he's going to be able to see me. So, like I said, a lot of dogs don't want to take that path of least resistance, go down here, but they have to go in between here to get the reward. Here, yes. Boom, dog gets reward out in front. Step three, this is a big step for the dog because this is really the first time the dog's going away from you. Before, it's been always the dog coming to you. So, <clears throat> start the dog in heel position. And this will be the first time we give the Revere, Varon, and also our hand signal when sending the dog as well. And in this one, you'll be on this side of the blind, so we're going to have to move in order to get an ideal position to reward. Because if we stay here, we're going to reward behind, which we never want to do. We never want to get in the habit of rewarding our dog behind us. So revere, the dog goes, we move, boom, we get in good position to reward the dog. Again, always reward in front. If the dog does not go around, maybe ease our criteria a little bit, get a little closer and, and encourage the dog. Um, <clears throat> do whatever it takes to get the dog to go away from you, go around and come back. So here's a video of my dog. 
And here, I, I set up a little too far. Um, I'd originally, I would start up a little bit closer <clears throat> and possibly move back to here after, after a couple good reps. But you can see what it looks like. Revere. We'll move back. Yes. Gets the reward. So like I said, you'll have to move back to get in good position to reward. So step four, we slowly start moving our way back. So this isn't a fast, this doesn't have to be a fast process. We're going to slowly move our way back. Um, and if we run into any hiccups, we'll ease our criteria a little bit, get a little bit closer and get some more good reps before we move back again. <coughs> So continue giving Revere Veron command as well as the hand signal. Dog goes all the way around, comes back to a good reward. <clears throat> Depending on where we're at in this um, step, we may have to move back in order to, to give a um, good position to uh, reward the dog. But if you're a good distance back, um, you should be pretty good position already. So you shouldn't require too much movement. <clears throat> Again, always reward in front of the dog. If you get in any, if the dog, um, sometimes you'll get to a certain point and the dog will get confused and look around and look back at you. If that happens, ease your criteria a little bit, encourage him to go around. So here's me and my dog. Decent amount of way, away from the blind now. Revere. He has to go between all the markers still. Reward out in front. And I'll drift a little bit that way. I'll, I'll start mimicking like I'm walking down the field like you would in a routine. So that he knows, hey, i got to get around here, get tight, and get back in front in order to get my reward. So that just encourages that tightness of the blind there. <clears throat> so step five. Once I'm about where I would be at a trial, so I'm, I'm basically sitting from the middle of the field. He's going with the blind. I'll start taking away some of these markers. Um, usually how it goes, I'll go from 10 of them to five, down to 5. So I'll have 5 markers here. I'll send the dog. This can be, with these bigger gaps now, this can be kind of tempting for the dog to want to go in between these. I don't allow it. Um, so if the dog does it, I make him go at all. Usually if they go out, it's going to be in between here. So I'll replace a marker and put one in here. Because for whatever reason, right around where they bend right here is right where they want to go out if they're going to go out. So I'll put one in here to discourage it and send him again. And I just get a couple good reps like that. I'll take it out and then see if I have it still. Once, I, once I've got five, five of them good where he's going nine, ten times out of ten, I will go from five to two. And now this is kind of where you have to make a decision I want my dog I'm trying to get my dog to look like Martin Page's where it's taking the blind tight all the way down the blind and coming in you can just have this one right here if you want and it, it, he'll take it tight here and that'll probably get you full points um, so you kind of need to make a decision what's important to you at this point um, I want my dog to to be tight all the way around to here but if you just want him tight to here then then that's probably acceptable so Revere, boom. If the dog, either at the five or with the two here, if he starts saying, ah, "I'm going to go around the markers now," replace. If there, if you got two of them, and he starts. I'd put a third one kind of right here, and discourage that. Make sure to go all the way around, but replace markers and do it again. And get some successful reps. And so. Here's a video of my dog here. I have four markers. So take a look at it. Tight, yes. Then I take a couple away. Now I've got two. So he's still got to go come in tight and then still got to go around this this one left here. So there we go. That's pretty much the five steps that I use. Um, this is the very beginning. So the dog at this point understands 
go around a blind, take it tight. Um, we still haven't built a huge distance, so the dog's not going to be ultra fast yet. He's not going to be in the same kind of drive he is <clears throat> for protection usually. Um, but uh, we, we've got decent speed, but we're, we're really just molding that go around tight, come back, go around tight, come back. <clears throat> and that's the um, Blind Search 101. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, sticking in there and uh, um, listening. Uh, look for further additions of this tutorial. I'm going to have an intermediate edition where we're moving on to multiple blinds and an expert level edition where we get the dog really looking into the blinds and then proofing it for trial. Um, you can visit my website anytime at highintrial.com for additional training articles and all kinds of cool stuff on there. Um, we got contests going on and uh, fantasy shoots and IPO stuff. So take a look at it, highintrial.com. My name is John Wolf. Thank you guys for listening.